the valley circle blocks till I'm busy. What's up, guys? All right, so this is the level one uh, DC audio 10 inch uh, stamp seal basket. Uh, cleans it all up with a four and a half inch uh, grinder. And then I just kind of washed it with the hose outside, wiped it all down, and used a little bit of alcohol on the bare steel surfaces to get all of the any any excess paint or whatever, clean it off and get the water off it so it doesn't rust. So uh, this is how we're gonna start it out tonight with doing the uh, yeah they had the they had glue on the bottom of the basket to the motor. I really don't know why. I've never had any issues with just using bolts and like a dab of CA glue on the, the bolt head. And if you ever need to take them off, you just tap it with like a screwdriver and the CA glue shatters and you can take your screw out. So I don't know what the issue is with that, but I think that was kind of overkill. Anyways, this is gonna be kind of a, a piece together video. I'm gonna try to prop the camera up later as we uh, start uh, start to assemble this so uh bear with me all right be right back all right got my phone propped up all right so i got the basket attached to the motor and you see here um i just put some washers in there to help space it up yes there's enough threads left in the top plate I wanted two reasons. I wanted another gap for cooling. And then second reason is, bear with me a little dusty. Uh, this cone, I believe is slightly deeper than the original DC cone is on here. So it just felt like it didn't have too much down travel before it was in the bottom out. So set this aside. So I have marked the halfway point on the coil a little piece of uh, a little uh, sharpie. Uh, we are going to align that up with the. Let's see if I can point this out here. The best of my ability. So you want the gap right here, where the top plate and the pull piece meet. That's your strongest point, as you can see. Because like, see, the top's not very strong. This not very strong here. This between here. This is, you know, a lot more force to get this little. Uh, uh, T, uh, T handles Allen T out. So, uh, yes, yeah, so like I said, I got the halfway point. And then uh, the spiders, I am not able to stack these upside down like I was thinking because the ridge here, it, uh, it does hit, it does hit the thing, or the, uh, the landing. But that's all right. This is a cheap stamp seal basket. I'm, Thought about upgrading or slapping on another uh, 10 inch basket. I mean, I'll show you the difference in a second. Bear with me. So I know it's a little dusty. Here's a 10 inch basket. This got this has different steps for different size spiders. And I'm sure this is a 7.4. So I'm not sure, so this won't be on the very top like this eight inch spider is, it would be on the one below it and I can probably stack it upside down if I wanted to. That's all right, enough of that. So we're gonna double stack these spiders and we're gonna get it lined up. Let's so start putting the coil through. So this will go as far down we can and then we're gonna kind of twist it get some of the relief off there and this is this is a just an extra spider for stiffness so it really don't matter like you know where it's at and this will this will even itself out so then uh, get this one going and yes this is a single forearm coil so I will be kind of snipping uh, the tails of these leads right here figure out the halfway point of the gap. That's another reason too, I have kind of like a people too, I can see where the, this gap is so I can adjust the, 
the coil up and down on this on the suspension this you know the the, the subwoofer suspension and uh yeah so a 7.4 inch spider fits in this stamp steel basket i don't know what stamp steel basket this is i'm sure other companies have used this in the past you know kind of start off the chain shelf so i do have a little bit of wiggle room and then uh I gotta cut some paper. Uh, once I cut the paper, I'll make strips and we will evenly distribute, uh, I don't know, maybe four strips of paper in, in four corners inside the voice coil, but around the pole piece. And that will give us the perfect center for the voice coil. And then we'll start gluing the spiders down. So right now, the only thing I'm gonna do with the, the CA glue is uh, do some tack tacks here for the spider to be level with the coil. So bear with me while I grab some paper. Of course, you can never find your scissors when you need them. Let's do this. So, we'll start by stacking uh, paper. Sometimes some coils have more, more of a gap in there than others. So we want this as center as possible. Not only does it give it center, but it gives it, uh, it keeps it from tilting back and forth because you don't want to glue the spider to the voice coil cockeyed because well, what's gonna happen when you glue it on, when you try to, you can put paper in there all you want afterwards if the spider is glued cockeyed to the voice coil, it's going to rub when it starts going up and down. So let's see here. Start off with glue four. This is what I've always used. I know there's other shims out there and stuff, but see, so I got one right there. So there's four. So one, two, three, four. Four more straight across. And now there's still plenty of room. So we're gonna add, let's see here, two and two. We're gonna add two more to each side and then we will even, uh, put another even amount for, uh, to, the other, to the other corners, if there were corners inside a circle. So I added two there. So now there's six pieces of paper there and six pieces of paper there. And there's still more room, so we're gonna have more. So we'll do, oh, this is a long boring process, trust me. So there's eight. And two more on the other side. And once you can't fit any more paper in there, that's when you know This is some thin paper too. I guess we'll do 10. Some people like to do uh, like, a, like a bigger, which I could have. You got a wider strip that kind of makes like two half moons. Two more right here. 
Now there's 10 on each side, 10 strips of paper. Starting to get a little bit more difficult to Guess we'll try 12, so we're adding four more to each side. It's a lot bigger of a gap than I thought. Cut some more. Thirteen gonna be the magic number. Oh, nope, there's only more. These are even, back in the hole, space apart. Now we can go down just a little bit. So right there is my Sharpie mark. sitting at the top edge of the top plate. Hopefully work some extra slack out. And then, so, kind of hard to see it there. I have to really zoom in. These are all 100% even. All right, it's time for some glue. Put just a little bit. Later. Glue. Leak down me a little bit. Okay. So, put just a little bit of glue in there. I just made two little half moons. Just add just a little bit more too. And give it some time to, to soak in. Okay. 
Oh, made a little bit of a mess, but a little blemish don't hurt. Just right around. So I just want to give it a little bit of uh, time to soak in uh, from obviously the coil to the spider. This will kind of get it slashed in. Then, good old activator. Yes, I need a lazy Susan. I seem to be, I've been lazy, haven't made one yet. So, I'll give that about a minute or so, and then we can pull this up and then start gluing the underside of these spiders. So I'm hoping that that will, uh, has soaked through to the second spider. So I'm gonna do this too. Forth. That one again. Cool. Well, you can kind of see that. I get it going. This this shit's pretty amazing. Uh, I was first introduced to it. My dad had some when I was uh, we used to put model airplanes together. And I got into speakers and figured out what CA glue was and realized it was the same shit. Ooh, had a little bit of a spill. Now we we're going to keep these pieces of paper, actually, dummy me hasn't recorded a speaker in a little while. I'm going to try to keep these, oh there, there you got it, look at that. So we'll do this afterwards, but I'm going to finish gluing the cone and we can go kind of overkill on this. This isn't going to hurt nothing. Snip those off too. And like I said, so now flip it upside down, continue the process. So, looks all right, Just spread around. And if I was pushing a, like a lot of power to, I don't know, some sort of big boy speaker, uh, I would definitely add glue into the, that valley down in there for the spider. 
get it going. I think once this hardens, I don't think it's gonna rip. It's not that much motor force in a level one. It was like one of my 18s or, or like the, you know, on Criminator Audio 21s. 21 inch death penalties, I'd say, you know what? I would probably put like some of that rope in there or a triple joint, because I know Lord of Base you can get, you can order like a triple joint ring, three inch or four inch coils. Yeah, look at that. Not the prettiest, but it should work just fine. So now that we're all set, we're gonna have to mac up the cone, or what we could do is just glue the, uh, the spider in right now. Might do that. Obviously, when you're gluing your spiders in, if your basket has, well, uh, a spot to hold the push terminals, which I will be using. I know some guys use direct leads, but I don't, it doesn't really matter. I just want to be able to disconnect it easy. Go back down. I'll even these back out. We'll kind of put these through the hole. Flip it a little bit. These are going to be cut off anyways. I'm using this side, but get the idea. Move this over just a little bit. So yeah, kind of see what's even there. over. I probably just pull them aside. So we'll tie those in here. I got the soldering iron. Let me cut these off real quick. So since we're not using only but one side. Seems to be pretty even.
Never cannot have enough glue. Just remember that. So the glue has ran underneath. Sometimes if you have like a bigger or a different spider landing, I have used, uh, I put a bead of glue down, held the voice coil up and then dropped it in and then put uh, glue on top. So it's a decent amount, it's like three passes. Get it all activated here. So yeah, this will, this will be uh, part two of the other of my first video for tonight. I'll have to work on this next. Hold on, guys. All right. So last night, I got a phone call. I decided to kind of clean up. It's getting cold out. I uh, ended up later on taking this inside and finishing this thing up. Just doing, uh, reuse the, uh, the little terminals for uh, the leads so I can bolt those on. So I just desoldered the DC ones and add to, added some solder, kind of put them through the hole, resoldered them. And then uh, I did have to trim up the cone a decent amount down in there. I'll get some focus anyways uh that way the cone would sit a little farther this cone is a little tall so it does it does squish the spider the, the spider down just a just a hair probably like this much in order to get the the uh the foam surround to lay flat on the frame next time i will probably order uh or clean up one of my other baskets and see if i can bolt it to this i i forget what the bolt pattern is on the top plate for this dc audio level one but then i had a tiny air leak in here uh last night wasn't happy with that so i did add another layer of glue it's not the prettiest but uh it's functional and uh this has i've been kind of playing with it breaking in a little bit i'll go grab the other iphone and make a video of the sync flexion this automatically even though you know, it's a single four ohm, it's got a bigger coil on it. I'm pretty sure it's handling more power than the level one ever did. Uh, no coil rub. It, I have had it bottom out once and it was not the coil. The coil did not bottom out. I believe the cone were the, so, I got, I could, so hard to see in there. I believe the cone hit the top plate. So it didn't sound like a ting or nothing. It did. You can definitely hear it was hitting just a little bit. On um, uh, was uh, playing some Psych Morrison, and one of his songs has like a nice low note, but there's actual like a punchy bass note added at the same time, and it was causing it to, you know, the cone to hit the top plate. Other than that, though, this is uh, look how much more compliant this is. You know, it's like, it's like a spring now versus the other stuff was, I don't know, didn't care for that, that rubber surround on it. This is, this is a hell of a th thick foam. And the cone is twice as thick as the DC cone. So much more paper on this thing. So, uh, bear with me. 
I will uh, get this thing playing. All right, I got some bass mechanics, so shouldn't have any issues. Hopefully, no copyright. Anyways, uh, so yeah, give it a little flex demo. The rebuilt single floor ohm DC Audio Level One. I do have the bass turned all the way up on the radio uh, for the sub output to, to positive 10, just so I don't have to scream these door speakers to get this thing flexing. smell yeah I got uh, some smell last night off of the home audio amplifier only because that was 250 watts and I was trying to give her the beans out of that thing uh, so it started giving a bunch of distortion to it but this right now got some 16 gauge recoil audio wire and I will show you that these amps are strapped yes so this is off the two cabs this is strapped so if that's a four ohm load what does that equal each amp seeing two ohms well, two ohms, each of these should make close to a thousand watts. Now, I wasn't giving it the full level, obviously, being that, you know, my stereo system doesn't really come alive until like volume 50 for the subs. But uh, I would have to put a, I would have to sit here and test the output on this to see how much I'm actually giving to it. But uh, yeah, she's, she's slapping pretty good. So if I have to say all day long, I think I, this thing could probably handle a thousand watts. Clean power, obviously. So yeah, there you go.